a delightful day to everyone and welcome back to the Ablight channel so today I'll be continuing the series finding Jesus but before I go to our topic what would you do if you are given a task bigger than your understanding would you receive that responsibility or not stay tuned so last time we have discussed about joseph's integrity and how he made an impact through the through the entire history of christmas so if we backtrack the story of Joseph, we will find out there that Joseph, despite of the challenges that he had experienced when he heard the news about Mary's pregnancy na, na, na hindi naman niya responsibility, he still insisted to be gentle and kind towards her by divorcing her quietly. And despite of that, despite of that uh, hurt, God revealed to him his purpose that he should be the foster father of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So he responded accordingly to the call of God to be the father of our Lord. And we can learn from Joseph that as men, uh, if you are single, we should be gentle and kind to the women around us. We should we should always try to honor and respect them, especially um, uh, if you drive, if you go, if you if you gear towards relationship in the future, one of the important thing that we should be thinking is not just our welfare, but we, that you should also think of your of the welfare of that woman you are in relationship with, because that's what Joseph did for Mary. He didn't allow Mary to be shamed in public, but he spoke to her privately about the matter, and. As, as God planned things ahead for them, Joseph responded to the call to be the father of the to be the foster father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today we're gonna look at the story of Mary. So if we're gonna read Luke chapter one, uh, it, it begins with a message from Gabriel to a priest, seasoned priest named. Zechariah. The connection of Zechariah to Mary, uh, Zechariah is the husband of Mary's cousin, which is Elizabeth. So, here's, here's what happened. So, Zechariah went into the temple, and when he went to the temple, um, the angel Gabriel uh, appeared to him, and he gave him good news that, that him and his wife, Elizabeth would bear a child. Okay? However, there was a problem with this good news. Zechariah wasn't able to perceive that because they are already old. But as Zechariah questioned the angel, the angel responded to him that things will, uh, things will happen, but there is a consequence with that question. Because he questioned the, the message that Gabriel was telling to him, he was muted for a season. He wasn't able to speak. Okay, He cannot speak his, his thoughts because he doubted the message of the angel. Now, the reason why I'm pointing out this story because I will try to connect this to Mary's response when Gabriel gave him the message so what i'm going i'm going to read i'm going to read i'm going to read that luke chapter 1 verse 26 in the sixth month the angel gabriel was sent from was sent from god to a city of galilee named nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was joseph of the house of david and the virgin's name was mary and he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled 
at that saying and try to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said, the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will and he, and and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of the of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. So before I jump to the next verses, let's check what's happening here. So Gabriel uh, appeared to Mary to give her an extravagant news, right? That that uh, that God is favored about Mary. God has favored towards Mary, and the thing, the the news is that she will conceive a child. All right, she will conceive a child, and he will and she will name name her Jesus because he will be the savior not just of the Israelites, but the whole humanity. And after that, sabi rito ni Mary, and Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? Alright. So, Mary questioned the angel the same question that Zechariah had with Gabriel. How can this be? And the surprising thing is, the response of Gabriel to Mary, and the response of Gabriel to Mary is different than Zechariah. In verse 20, in verse 35, and the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and his and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it to be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. As I meditated with the story, I was thinking, why did the angel give a different response towards Zechariah and Mary who have given the same questions? Their questions are totally the same. How can this be? Zechariah asked the question, how can this be? Because, uh, since they are old, how can this happen? While Mary asked the same question, to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? However, the difference the, the difference were were distinct. Kasi the angel uh, gave a consequence to Zechariah that he will be mute until John the Baptist is born. While Mary, she explained uh, he explained to her that this is going to happen through the Holy Spirit and she also informed her that her cousin, who is known to be to be um, sterile or um, known to be sterile, but will have a child, will have a son, and and the good news is is ika six month na nung pagbubuntis ni Elizabeth, and then there's and to to give a real, realization about this story. One lesson that we could learn from this is that uh, finding Jesus brings us a good news. When Mary called, uh, when Gabriel called Mary to be to give her the good news, to be the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is a good news that awaits, not just for Mary, but to all humanity. Alright? And as I examine this story, I can't help but to ponder why is there a consequence to Zechariah's question, but to Mary, there's only an explanation. 
As I examine this, the difference between Mary and Joseph, of course, the first thing that, that they differ is their questions, uh, the, the purpose of the question. Zechariah's question is out of doubt. However, Mary's question is out of validating her faith out of validation of how can this thing happen regardless of her situation. And another thing that we should also understand, when Zechariah asked this question, he was asking this question in the temple of God, meaning he should never doubt this in the first place because he is already in the presence of the Lord according to their to their to their law the temple of God is uh, uh, when you go to the temple of God you you are in the presence of God and when he received that news he is in the presence of God and and the thing is his question earned him to be muted for a certain period of time you know why why he, you know what's the reason why he needs to be muted for a certain time? Because our words are powerful. If, uh, as I mentioned previously, words determine the course of our action. Zechariah's response to the angel is not just out of doubt. But that words that that uh, that he was communicating to Gabriel may end him not able to fulfill the purpose of God for John to be conceived through Elizabeth. Contrast to Mary, Mary asked a question out of faith, and he she also concluded this. According to uh, verse 38, And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The question that we should all always ask about ourselves, whenever God is giving us instructions and revelations, are you able to determine yourself as a servant towards a great call that is ahead of you? God is our Lord. And if there is a Lord, there is a servant. Mary understood this well, that, that her purpose is to serve the Lord. She is communicating to all of us that the right response towards God's call is to serve the purpose of the Lord. And are we, be, are we able to do that in our lives today? Are we, be, are we able to serve the purpose of our Lord in our lives today? Because at the end of, at the, end of the day, the purpose of the Lord is the best thing that we could ever pursue in this world so afterwards Mary visited visited Elizabeth and according to these verses in those days Mary arose and went with his into the hill country to the town in Judah and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth and when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary the baby lived in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are among you women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. 
Another thing that we should understand about the story of Mary is the validation of the people around her. If people validated the calling that God has given to you, it means that we ought to be confident in pursuing that call. When people validates that that gift that God has given to each one of us, it doesn't mean that the glory is ours, but it's still God's glory that is reigning in our lives. However, are we are we able to respond accordingly to be confident towards that calling that God has given to us? We can learn a lot from the story of Mary as she understood to serve the purpose of the Lord in her life. And let me just share to you this song that she, that that he that she exclaimed after hearing the testimony of Elizabeth, after Elizabeth validated that she is carrying the son of God, the savior of mankind and he mentioned and she mentioned here, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of her servant. For behold, for now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is, to, is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with God, with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoken to our fathers, to Abraham, to his offspring. And to, to tell you honestly, the, the, this prayer from Mary is not about exalting herself, but exalting the calling of the Holy Spirit in her life. This is not about a, boss, a boastful response towards Mary, but it's about her confidence towards God. Because the calling of Mary, in uh, compare, compared it to our situation today, halos parehas lang kasi in their time, they are having troubles in their, uh, in, their, in their country because the Romans are there to conquer them. In contrast to our situation today, we are troubled of a lot of things. Our, our situation right now is not normal compared to what we have experienced before we we have uh, we're not troubled because of a conquering nation but we are troubled with the things that happen globally that that affects not just our country but every people around the world he was te- she was telling in this prayer that despite of people forgotten god remained to remember their situation. And I want us to understand that that the same God that Mary is pointing out from this passage, from this from this worship song that she was exclaiming is the same God that we are serving today, the God that remembers every situation, every every problems or every inclinations of our hearts that is the same God that remembers Mary and remembers us as well today and this is how important it is to understand how how Mary showed to us the importance of serving the purpose of of God in our lives despite that it's it's beyond of our understanding the best thing that we should that we should pursue is the calling of the lord in our life okay, to give you an honest uh honest take about this not everyone would be in full time in church not everyone would be would be pastor would be would 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 would, 
would have a platform um, in a Sunday service or in a youth service. But where you are today, is it God's purpose why you were in that place? Uh, God's calling goes beyond church responsibility. God's calling goes beyond um, doing for the welfare of the poor, doing for the welfare of the sick. But it's about the obedience that we express to that calling that He has for us. And in all honesty, Mary is really the fit partner for Joseph. Simply because they both understand that God's calling should be served accordingly. And to, to give an additional, uh, additional, additional lesson about this topic, uh, the succeeding verses discuss the birth of John the Baptist. So Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth gave birth to John. So the, the, the people around her were asking her what name that they should give to the baby because they were thinking to give it to give Zechariah as the name of their baby. However, Elizabeth agreed with the angel to give John as the name of their baby boy. And there's something that is so amazing about this, this story that is memorable for this couple. Zechariah at that time is still mute. He cannot still speak at that moment. So the their, their neighbors, the people around them, ask the same question. And Zechariah asked for a, for a paper and pen to write what specific name they should give to their baby. As, as Zechariah finished writing the word John, he was able to speak John should be the name of their baby. And what can we get from this story? As I mentioned previously, words are powerful. How do you express your faith right now towards God? Do you speak according to the power of faith that you have with Him? And another thing that we should also understand about this story is that are we able to serve the purpose that God has given to all of us? And this is an amazing, amazing thing that we should look at. That despite of the things that were ha that's happening around us today, the way to find Jesus is still to, is still through understanding the purpose that we have from God. And at the same time, serving that purpose accordingly, speaking faith throughout that course of following God's call in order for us to succeed to, towards that calling that He has for us. Let me just pray for all of you today. Lord, thank you because you have given us a purpose that we should accomplish in this world. Help us to understand that it is beyond us. And despite of, of that, that thing, that, that calling that you've given to us, that is bigger than us, help us to accomplish these things according to your word, according to the power of faith that you have, you have given to us. Because that calling that you have entrusted to us requires a faith building response just like Mary responded to Gabriel we are your servant we are here to serve our purpose accordingly and help us not to forget that we can do these things through your son Jesus Christ help us to find him always in our lives that despite of the challenges that we may see at this moment we will not forget that Jesus had already conquered everything.